Hi, everyone. Welcome to a special episode of Automotive Logistics video, a virtual version of our Red Sofa series, uh, where we speak to some of our, our top experts uh, across the industry in, in various topics. And, and today, uh, I'm very, very pleased that we're going to welcome back uh, one of the keynote speakers from our Automotive Logistics and Supply Chain Digital Strategies 2023 conference, which took place uh, in November in Munich, where we really looked at uh, many aspects of digitalization uh, across the sector. And uh, and this, this speaker from Gestamp is Digital IT Tech Director and helps to build and lead uh, software platforms, systems that connect uh, big data, uh, that drive Industry 4.0 in production and in logistics and supply chain, and uh, is, is working with teams to develop um, minimal viable products, MVPs, and wide-scale systems and software that, uh, that can quickly help and scale these, these processes. Um, uh, based in based in Spain, and uh, very pleased that he can join us today, ladies and gentlemen. Very pleased to welcome Diego Malada. Diego, great to have you with us. Hi, hello. Thanks for the invitation. It's a, it's a pleasure. So I'm really glad we could pick up on some of the the topics that you shared with our audience back in Munich, and you you talked about some really exciting stuff there about uh, um, federated data networks, about um, uh, sort of use of generative uh, AI in certain areas, uh, traceability, a whole host of stuff. And, and this is a chance now for to share with some of our wider audience uh, exactly some of that and go into a little bit, a little bit more detail. Uh, what I wanted to start with, uh, Diego, actually, is the, the federated network for, for IT, um, which you talked about in, in Munich as a way to kind of enhance digitalization of, of plants and, and of the supply chain. Tell us a bit more about this structure, uh, the layers you're employing for data, for example, what's in the cloud, uh, what's on the edge, and, and what's, uh, what's on the shop floor. Good, perfect. Well, the, this concept of uh, global uh, federated software framework is uh, first mainly about um, about people. So, what we are trying to do is to create um, global communities, and those communities are somehow the experts, no, in in each of these uh, technology. And we try that um, people from all the regions that want to and, and can contribute um, and can do that. Um, Without any frontier, let's say, you know, uh, we let's put an example. We have people, um, uh, let's say, in China, no, that can contribute a lot uh, creating mobile applications. So we have these people connected with the people that is in Germany or in Spain or or somewhere else. No, it's kind of an open source community uh, where um, we want to boost also the people that want also to get the uh, the reskilling no, on, 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 on this part of uh, software development. And of course, having also the close uh, um, experience and work with the plants, because at the end, the, the, the final outcome, no, the, the projects that we are doing in this industry follow um, strategy is to, to transform, no, to help the, the plants that we have globally. Indeed, and so important as I as uh, you shared in Munich. Uh, I think Gestamp has has over a hundred plants and, and and many many networks. So there's no shortage of of data um, there to to leverage. The question is is how it's captured and how it's understood. And one of the topics that came up a lot in, in at the conference, and indeed we cover in automotive logistics, is is data quality, data semantics. Um, you know, as as the kind of backbone, if you like, to achieving these networks. So to what extent would you say at Gestamp your production of logistics data is standardized and intelligible across those locations already, as you mentioned? And um, you know, what are some of the concrete steps that you're taking to, to improve that? Mm -hmm. um, I would say that um, based on this, um, let's say, concept of framework that we have to, to develop our own solutions, uh, I would say that it helps to, to contribute no, in, this, in this part of the standardization that uh, that you are um, now introducing, but uh, anyway, it's a, it's a big challenge because uh, at the end, uh, when we talk uh, in this case about logistics, uh, we are not talking long only about the ERP, for example. We talk also about the IoT, the monitorization of different um, industrial processes that are using different protocols. Um, we have different infrastructures, and, and you mentioned also before the part of the edge and the cloud. So uh, not everything is in the same place. No, we have also some part of the structure the, of the infrastructure and the and the architectures that are more, let's say, real time 
and are working very close to the to the industrial process. So uh, trying to create a, um, a standardization and, 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 and to work in the same way and homogeneous in, in all the layers, it takes only not only, let's say, the, the, the technical or software development profiles, it takes also other ones that are more focused. One side, of course, the industrial experts that we bring into the into the equation, but we have also all the part on the data governance. We have also um, a data office. So all of these components are somehow connected. And, and and work together and but as i say it's a, it's a big challenge anyway to to put others in the same page yeah no question and, and it's certainly one that many many companies in the supply chain are 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 battling and, and and trying to work through um what are there areas of for example interoperability sort of gaps in interoperability uh in your production logistics processes that um, you feel need to be addressed in particular or are being addressed in particular to to map this connectivity well, good question. It's a it's a big challenge. Uh, it's true that the industry in general um, is uh, moving forward, creating some let's say um, bigger standards, no? And, and there are some protocols, as for example OPC UA, when we are talking about IoT monitorization, that are um, uh, wide um, um, adopted, no? In different well PLCs and, and other industrial uh, technologies, but let's say it's not like the IT domain, no? where you buy a, a mouse and you connect into your laptop and it works. <laughs> In the OT domain, things uh, move still needs, let's say, uh, to have more more velocity no? on this part of the standardization. So uh, I would say that for us, it's, it's a combination of, uh, on one side, of course, the, the, the new industrial processes, the new PLCs, the new technologies that we have in the plants, of course, are already using the, the, the modern standards. So, so it's on how uh, quite close to this plug and play, let's say, and, and you can create this um, interoperability somehow in the same way that we do in the uh, IT domain. Um, but we sometimes we need to, when we are talking about the logistic processes, we need also to deal with technologies that are there since some years ago that are still not in the same um, in, in the same standards. No, so we need to do also in parallel some custom developments to adapt and, and to work on on it. How are you planning now to further um, this data integration and, and visibility across the, the wider supply chain in Gestamp? So, for example, including things like maybe even upstream suppliers, which we know have been a big focus. Well, what, what are some of the, the next key steps you would point to? Well, uh, in in this part, let's say we we have different different uh, challenges. No, the, the the first thing that we are working as we have this part of the global framework, um, we I mean we we may by design in, in the software side that the different components can somehow speak each other. So it, it's not a big deal somehow because we we are the ones designing and creating those software components for IoT, for quality, for logistic, for for different things. Um, on the other side, we are creating also a global cross, um, well, it's data lake, but we like to say that it's a lake house. So we are creating a global lake house structure and together with other teams, as I commented before, the part of the uh, data office and the part of the infrastructure team. Um, so it will also help us. And in fact, today is helping us uh, to exchange data um, internally between uh, departments. So the idea is to remove any data silo, any potential data silo with this approach is, is totally removed. And also we are able to start thinking you know, in, in the next step, uh, that is also how we exchange data uh, with other members in the in the supply chain. You no, know? So um, the good thing on this architecture, as I say, that we somehow control the end to end, and also we are able to um, split the use cases. Let's say we have use cases where we have uh, real time or streaming. So we need to exchange this data and, and, and some component is subscribed to another one and, and it's happening in real time. But other cases that is not required, we are able to do that in batch and, and, and it's moving big amount of data in batch. And, and of course, always um, ensuring that we have all the part of the first, the data governance and second, of course, all the part of uh, security in this part because cybersecurity is the key of all this approach in the, in, in the strategy that we have. If I also take a turn and look at supply chain traceability and, and transparency, which uh, which of course is very, very key when we're looking at Industry 4.0 and, and, and advancing the supply chain, do you see 
this traceability also playing a role in sustainability initiatives, for example, so developing uh, a clear visibility across your operations and even the supplier operations and coming up with ways to reduce reduce emissions and waste. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we are working in, in, in all projects, we are working in two different um, strategies, let's say, on this part. No? One is the traceability that we um, design and implement internally in the plants. Um, and the other one is uh, the one that is in the in the supply chain. No, we, we are exchanging also information with with some um, clients and, and suppliers. Um, how we connect all these things? Uh, we, we we are following also different approaches. If we talk about technology, uh, one is that there are some technologies no, that are proof already in the markets as blockchain. No, that that we have part of this. Um, uh, as part of the components of the framework that we have on the software side. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we are part of some um, initiatives as we have with uh, Katina X, where Katina X is, is, is about this concept, no? it's about how we ensure in a, in a data space or, 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 on, or in the supply chain, how we, we ensure that the, the data, I mean, the, the veracity of the data and, and the, uh, the truth of the information. No? Um, so, so it's key important for us uh, to, to, to show that. And for us also, it's very important to see uh, and to show that we can connect all the information that we have in the different steps, uh, the information of the IoT, when we are gathering data from the machines, from the industrial process where the part was transformed somehow, how was trans um, moved to, this, to the next steps with all the logistics and the quality. So we are able somehow also with this global lake house to connect all the information and, 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 to, and to have the, what we name somehow the, um, the ID, no? of one specific part that we have produced we are able to connect all this information from different heterogeneous uh, um, source of data. Another hot topic I wanted to, to bring up here, I mentioned in the introduction, the use of artificial intelligence um, and particularly how you may be using or looking at using AI uh, to drive supply chain uh, operations and decisions in supply chain with, with your teams. Can you talk about um, the approach here, examples or operations that you're working on this? Yes, well, the, the, the first step, you no, know, and the statistics says that uh, when we want to make a, someone want to make a, a, an algorithm, no, an, an artificial intelligence algorithm, uh, these persons will spend around 70 or 80 percent of the time, no, preparing the data, ensuring the data quality, and, and all this stuff, no. So um, um, uh, these examples show uh, how connected are both uh, uh, worlds, let's say, no. Uh, first, we need the data. First, we need to have all these. Uh, um, data preparation, data governance, uh, to the, all the standardization that we mentioned before, um, but we have also the components in the in the um, uh, framework and the architecture that um, led us to create artificial intelligence models. And for the artificial intelligence, we are following somehow the the same strategy that we do with the with the software development. We use this kind of, uh, um, uh, well, MLOps technologies or uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, life cycles, no? of how, how we are going to put in production, continuous integration, well, all this agile apply also in this world of, of, um, of, um, of the artificial intelligence ecosystem. And for logistics, we find that uh, artificial intelligence also helps a lot and, and there are some specific use cases, no? trying to, um, well, there are different scenarios, but one can be, for example, clustering, trying to find what are, let's say, the, the, the optimal no? um, uh, paths or processes. No? When we are working in global in different plants, we want also that some of the plants that are doing things better can learn from the other one. So we are training some, some models, no? some algorithms that can help us on this, on this way. And in Munich, there was a, there was one particular fascinating example that you you talked about um, a, a chat box, a sort of Gen I yeah. generated chat box for uh, battery box processes. Yes. Um, yes. In this, and uh, what I really like, the Mark III team, which maybe you can talk a little bit about what that is. So maybe what the Mark III team is and how you're using this example, for example, how is this an example that you're using in your manufacturing and development teams? Well, good. Uh, Mark III is, uh, is somehow the R&D initiative no? that we have uh, on the software team and the digital software team to to keep always no, involved, um, evolving the solutions and the continuous improvement because no, you know that in the software world somehow um, things are changing uh, very fast. 
Uh, so one of these projects uh, uh, you mentioned it was yeah it was the part of uh, Jarvis that is uh, the assistant no that we created um, uh, for the battery box uh, what, 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 one use case that we wanted to find one use case to prove the generative AI technology uh, it was very fast uh, a few days to to do that and it's a good example because uh, um, in this battery box use case uh, uh, what we wanted to prove was that we had a lot of information different documents uh, in heterogeneous formats videos different languages uh, pdf wh whatever format um, and we wanted to create kind of an assistant to this department to this team that they were able to do any whatever question based it of course in this um, um, in all this information that they had and to prove them that they are able to to well to solve the questions to find the information faster always having the reference when, when the, the assistant is providing an answer the assistant always uh, specify no the, the specific document where is the the information just to double check if they want or they want to extend the information and also to prove that can work in a um, secure environment no because uh, Everything around the generative AI is uh, is a good hype and very interesting for for many companies. But one of the risks, no, many people is uh, thinking about that and concern is okay, about where I'm going to put my information, no, and, and my documents and all these things that can be strategic. So we were able to connect all these dots. We were able to create the the, the architecture in a in a cyber secure um, uh, platform, and and, and we put proof this specific use case and what we are doing now is to do the same and, and trying to to extend that to to other to other areas to other teams that are in, interested uh, around quality around logistics around any things and for now the tests are going very good because um, all, all of them are always giving the, the the same feedback that is very useful when you, they they have a big amount of, of information uh, maybe related. Um, one of the things we note in the industry, you know, product life cycle times are compressing. The, the speed of change is faster than ever, especially if we look at, you know, some of the areas Gestamp is very active in, in terms of body and body and white processes to produce lightweight, et cetera. Is, is, the is, is, is that changing the way that supply chain and production teams need to, to manage engineering data? Uh, and information in terms of tools and systems and, and you know you have examples of how you're managing that from an IT perspective as well uh, I would say I, I will say yes I mean uh, we, we are in a moment of of, of uh, let's say a, a big change no because uh, you, you mentioned and, and we were commenting before uh, we are talking about flexibility we are talking about uh, circularity um, um, well, we have many dimensions. No, uh, the, the, connect, the supply chain is uh, um, even more connected. No, and, and shorter product life cycle. So, uh, we are in a moment where uh, this concept of uh, data-driven decision, no, I think is the key important. And how we can make that real? Uh, well, the, all the strategy that I mentioned before about uh, software frameworks, uh, federated teams. At the end, uh, the, the final the final target also is to um, provide to the experts because at the end the ones that uh, are going to change things are the experts from the from the industrial uh, areas, the logistics, quality, production, maintenance. Uh, to provide them the tools and, and, and the technology that, that help them to take decisions. So uh, sometimes it's going to be around, okay, we have trained an artificial intelligence model that works somehow automatically, it's not trivial, but works automatically and takes some outputs there. But other times is how we can make those profiles to explore the data without um, a big uh, high skill doing uh, programming stuff. So, uh, and this, is, uh, this last thing is a good example of how we are now also testing the, the generative AI technologies to, to do that, no? to, to make that the, the expert of the process, the industrial process or, or, or the specific area um, can query in the language that, the, that this person speaks, no? the, the maintenance uh, vocabulary and things, a system and the system internally is doing transformations to that, uh, to whatever big query in whatever uh, language, no? but uh, at the end, the, 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 the expert, the industrial expert can be autonomous, no? uh, trying to to analyze the information and to take the decision. So the, the target of all these things in this part is, is about that. It's not now that since that only is the technology there and everything is, is magic, is no, we are going to put the the levers to the to the industrial experts because they are the ones no, that we want to put them in the in the middle of the equation of everything. 
Absolutely. And and uh, just a last question, uh, Diego, as we as we look ahead to the year, uh, you know, what are some of your top goals or what are your top goals for, for advancing digitalization, you know, maybe specifically in, in supply chain and, and logistics? Oof. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> there are many challenges. There are many challenges. Uh, uh, well, wh one thing I will say that uh, I, I was talking every time about this uh, federated ecosystem. It's not something that uh, you can say one day, hey, this done and we have finished, let's move to the next thing. No? So this is something that first uh, needs um, a continuous improvement and, and to keep uh, uh, talking in the communities and, and connect more dots and dots and, and, and see how internally, well, internally, but globally, uh, can uh, we can do things better? So it's something that um, always um, is in this in the strat in the strategy and the goals, no, for for the next year. Um, but on the other hand, uh, I think that uh, this year should be also the year where initiatives as Catena X um, uh, should also start having um, uh, more use cases, no. And, and in fact, inside of this ecosystem, we are talking between the members how to uh, bring uh, new use cases where it's not only about how I'm internally doing things with the data is how we exchange the data. And, and, and uh, when we talk about this uh, Catena X, we talk about data spaces. And when we talk about data spaces, it's not only about how um, I send you some whatever amount of gigas or whatever amount of data. It's also about this data spaces, um, a new concept. No? And we can talk in, for example, things as federated learning and in the artificial intelligence uh, domain that is something that is quite new and there are maybe, maybe many uh, paper research around that, um, but it's part of what is defined in a data space. No? So I think uh, so the goals, if I think in internally first, will be on this part of the um, the communities that I mentioned. No? Uh, but if I talk also, and I'm thinking in the supply chains, we should boost no, the, these uh, use cases in, in ecosystems as, as Catena, for example. Diego, thank you so much for, for sharing some of those those goals and those developments with us. Um, always really fascinating to get your insights, and it was a great continuation from what we talked about uh, in, in, in automotive logistics, supply chain, digital strategies last year in Munich. And um, I'm looking forward to it kicking off a lot more um, in-depth discussions and, and events as well, because... Uh, you know, we are planning a lot more in this space. You know, we had the event in Munich last year, and, and I'm happy to announce we're now moving this event as well to North America with the first digital, um, with the first automotive logistics and supply chain digital strategies, North America, which will take place in Nashville, June 26th to 27th this year. And um, and the, and we'll be back in Munich for, for the next automotive logistics and supply chain digital strategies in Europe, December 3rd, 4th. Uh, back in Munich. So something we're really looking forward to exploring with our audience, also with you, Diego, and, and your team um, at, at, at these these types of events and forums. So really a pleasure to, to speak with you and to collaborate with you. Thanks so much for sharing this with our audience. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you really soon, I hope, at uh, one of these events. Thanks a lot.